smoked brisket done low and slow. This is gonna be fantastic. And we're doing it today outside on the Pit Boss 3 Series vertical pellet smoker. I've been wanting to do this one for a while now, just haven't had the time, so I'm excited to do it. And believe it or not, this is the first brisket I've ever smoked in my life, so hopefully it turns out good. So let's dive right into it. Let's check out this brisket. All right, so this is about a 10 and a half pound full brisket, flat and point. It happens to be Wagyu, but don't worry. Cook whatever kind you want, it doesn't matter. So let's get it out of the package. Like so. I'm gonna get this bag with all the juice out of the way. And get some paper towels. Pat it dry, get it as dry as you can. Flip it over. There we go. So let's look at the non-fat cap side real quick. Not a whole lot for me to trim here, but I do want to expose as much of the meat as I can so that my rub can get on there, stick, and hopefully we'll get a nice bark out of it. So just got a nice sharp knife here. I'm going to bend the brisket a little bit just to make it a little easier. Now I can grab the fat and just make little cuts till I get down like that. Same thing here. Get that out of there. Let me try and cut some of this. Get this guy over here. Again, all I'm trying to do is expose as much of the meat on the top as I can for my rub. Turn it this way so you guys can get a better look. Just gonna grab right here and look at that coming right off. There we go. Okay, this big chunk here, I'm just gonna cut that right off. See that, that's all fat. Get rid of that. Get a little bit of this here on the point. So nothing too crazy to cut away on this. Some of this silver skin, we'll get rid of that. Same down in this corner. Get that off of there. Okay, so I think that's good enough for me on this side. Let's turn the fat cap over. So they've already trimmed a lot of this for me. They've removed the decal, that real big hard piece of fat. I think that would sit right here. I'm not gonna touch this too much. Uh, I want this fat to protect the meat so in my vertical smoker, all the heat's coming from below. And because this is what I would just consider a backyard cook, no competition here, I'm gonna make just 
some little scores in the fat because I will put a little bit of rub on this. I think you guys saw me do this on my uh, pork butt. So I'll just score it like that. I'm gonna come across this way. That's good. And I am gonna trim up this line right here. Let me take just a little bit off. Find the meat, right about there. See what I'm doing? I'm cutting, looking to make sure I'm not taking off a big hunk of meat. And then I can just run it. So, and so that's all the trimming I'm gonna do. Nothing crazy. I probably cut off about a half a pound. So now we got a 10 pound brisket. I'm just gonna get on some new gloves. We'll get the rub on and then we'll get it in the smoker. All right, so I am going to lightly season the fat cap. Remember I cut those little slits in the fat. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of flavor down in there. Okay, just pat it in. And this side over here that doesn't have any fat, we want to get a lot of rub on there. Make sure we get it on the sides. Let's flip it over. And just in case you're wondering, this is um, Harry Sue's Moolah Beef Rub. Really tasty stuff. So that's what I put on the fat cap side. On this side, I am going to put down a binder. Not because it's gonna help the rub bind. There's plenty of moisture on here, but this is good flavor for me. If you don't like it, you don't have to put it on. But I do, so we're gonna get this coated. Rub it in. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna put on is celery seed. Just very light. I did this with my um, chuck roast a couple weeks ago and it really helped with the smoke ring. Plus a little added flavor and texture. And now we're gonna finish it off with this Harry Sue rub. So what you wanna do here is coat it until you can't see the meat. Which means um, be very generous with it. Be sure to get it on the sides. Then you're gonna pat it in. Don't rub it. And then I'm gonna do this one more time. Hit it up again. This might look like a lot, but this is a giant piece of beef. And it's gonna need a lot of seasoning here. There's other rubs. You could do like a Texas style, just salt and pepper. A lot of people like that. Okay, same thing, I'm just gonna pat it in and I'm just gonna let this rub sit until it gets that nice wet look, maybe five, six minutes. So let's talk about the smoker setup. So today we're gonna smoke between 250 degrees and 275 degrees. And from what I've noticed on this smoker, 275 on the dial is gonna be perfect. And that's pretty much gonna make sure it doesn't drop below 250 degrees. I don't want it to go below 250 because I don't want this to take any longer than it has to. I don't want the meat to dry out. 
So dial is set to 275. And for my pellets, I'm using a mix of the apple wood mix and hickory. So I combine those up in a bucket, pour them in, so they're mixed real well. And then one thing you'll notice, if you look inside the door, you're gonna see a brick wrapped in foil. The reason I'm doing this is I have the smallest of the Pit Boss vertical smokers. This is the three series. And this 10 pound brisket is a little bit too long for this smoker. So instead of cutting meat off the brisket to make it fit, I'm just gonna use this brick to shorten the distance. It's gonna sit underneath it and prop it up a little bit. And after a couple hours of cooking, it'll shrink and I can take that brick out of there. If you have the four series, five series, seven series, pro series, you don't have to worry about this on a 10 pound brisket. You might with a 20. So just a little tip for those of you that have the three series like I do. All right, so the rub on here has that nice wet look. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get it in the smoker. Here we go, fat cap down. You can see what I was talking about, how it won't fit. So we're gonna drape it over this brick. Get the door closed. And now we're gonna let the pit boss do its thing. You know, you gotta figure about an hour per pound. So this could take roughly 10 hours, but it could take 12, it could take eight. We'll just have to play it by ear. The game plan is to wrap this to color, not temperature. So when it reaches a color that I like and a bark that I like, then I'm gonna wrap it in butcher paper. It might just so happen that that's at 160 degrees, but I'm not wrapping it to temperature at all. So we'll come back in about 45 minutes to an hour to show you how it looks. All right, we're at the one hour mark. Current pit temperature at the rack level is 240 degrees and the built-in temperature probe that's at the bottom of the smoker says it's about 270 right now. So things are going good. Let's check it out and see how it looks. Oh yeah, that's looking real nice. The rub is wet on the edges, but it's dry right here on the front. So I'm just gonna spritz it. This is water. That's all it is, warm water. So let's get the top here. And there is another advantage to having uh, this brick underneath. Like I've seen Harry Sue and other people on their kettle smokers put wood chunks underneath the meat. And that's gonna help prevent any kind of pooling of the juices on top, which will help you get a better bark. So it's kind of twofold here. One, it shortened the distance for me so I could fit this in there. And two, like I just said, we're not gonna have juices pooling on top. But I'll bet you by the next hour, I can take this brick out. I can already see it shrunk up quite a bit on both sides. So we'll come back in another hour and see how it's doing. All right, hour number two. Temperature at the rack level where the brisket is has been sitting steady about 230, 235 the last hour. The internal temperature probe at the bottom says the temperature is at 270. This thing's ready for a spritz and I'm gonna take the brick out. All right, first things first, we lift up the brisket. Take out the brick. Let's get this repositioned a little bit. Man, that's perfect. Hope you guys can see that nice dark color it's starting to develop. So the rub is dry, a little bit on the fronts and the top. The sides are still wet. Um, so we're gonna spritz this up. Again, this is just water. You could use beef broth, you could use apple juice, whatever you want. The whole point is just to get it wet, help that bark develop, get some more smoke on there. So let's get the door closed. All right, so we'll come back in another hour and see how it looks. All right, we're on hour number three. This thing looks amazing. I can't wait to show it to you. So again, at the rack level where the brisket is, that temperature has held steady at about 240. The pit boss temperature where the probe is at the bottom of the pit says it's at 270. So that's pretty much held for the last three hours. Let's get this door open. We're gonna check the temperature of the brisket and we're gonna spritz it. All right. Beautiful, look at that thing. So first, let me get a reading 
and this thick part of the point here. It's 138. And this real thin part down here. It's at about 153. Not a whole lot we can do about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a spritz. All right, so I'm guessing that I'm probably gonna let this go for another 45 minutes to an hour. And depending on the color and how it looks, I'll be ready to wrap it. And then I'm actually gonna finish it off in the oven inside my house rather than burn through all those pellets. Once it's wrapped, it's not gonna take any more smoke, so why bother, right? All right, we just hit hour number four. It's got the perfect color that I want, so that means it's time to wrap it. Let me pull it out of here and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so it's got that real nice, dark, kind of mahogany color. You can see it's real juicy over here on the flat. This is kind of where that big chunk of fat was. It's juicy over here. That was another big chunk of fat. So just real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just spritz the top here where it's kind of dried out. Again, this is just water. And I'm not cooking this thing to temperature. I'm cooking it to feel probe tender. But for those of you who are curious, let's take a look at what this uh, internal temperature is in the point. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, 155. And right over here in the flat, 160. So that's perfect. So let me wrap this guy up. This is butcher paper. You could use foil if you want. You could use foil and butcher paper. Just from all the articles and videos I've seen, a lot of people prefer the, the paper. One reason is um, it's not gonna steam as much. Some of the juice will escape and um, might help you maintain that crust a little better. The bark, if you will. Hold it like this. Bring it back over. Fold it over again. And then we'll use the weight of the brisket to hold down the paper. So this is gonna go on a baking sheet. And then I'm gonna go put it in the oven. The oven is set to 250 degrees and it's gonna cook until it's probe tender. Again, it doesn't matter what the temperature is. What matters is when you stick that probe in or toothpick, it should go in like butter. So whatever temperature that is, once it hits there, we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, I'm ready to unveil this thing. I gave it the probe test. It feels super tender, but I wanna check it uh, without the paper on there. So you guys can see it, so I can see it. And it's been in the oven for about four and a half hours, giving us a total cook time so far of eight and a half hours. Let's take a look inside the paper. A lot of juice. I mean, this paper is absolutely soaked. Get this off of here. Wow. Okay. Let me just probe it in a couple of places. Yeah, that's going through. That's like if you were to put the probe in a jar of peanut butter. I mean, a little bit more pull right there you can see a little bit more pull there okay that's pretty tender over on this side it's at 201 degrees
and I think I'm just gonna put it back in for maybe 20 more minutes just so I can get those other little sections a little bit more time I think it would be fine if I just rewrapped it and let it rest right now but I'm gonna do 20 more minutes we'll see what happens when we come back I'm gonna have a special guest doing some taste testing a fellow youtuber so you're definitely gonna want to check that out all right everybody we're back I put it back in for another 20 minutes about a half hour so total cook time nine hours we did four hours in the smoker five hours in the oven and we had it in the oven at 250 degrees it's been resting now for an hour so we're talking a 10 hour total cook time right now and now it's time for our special guest we've got ted come on in ted so this hey, is everybody. this is ted from it's all about the rack on youtube ted is new to youtube but he's certainly not new to smoking so ted why don't you tell people a little bit about your background and, and then we'll get into tasting this thing so I've been smoking for probably 20, 25 years, something like that. Um, gone through some different types of smokers. Uh, originally started on a char charboil electric coil where you would set the wood chunks around it and yeah. smoke like that. Smoked for about five years on one of those. Ended up moving into a uh, Bradley Puck style of smoker. Nice. Used that for uh, quite a few years, probably five, seven years, something like that. Um, about seven or eight years ago, I ended up going to a Green Mountain Pellet Grill the, uh, a lot of people who watch are pellet smokers and new to smoking. So a guy with your kind of experience, we talked before uh, I did this brisket, Ted gave me a, a bunch of really good advice. And I definitely think you guys should go check him out after this. Um, he's got a lot of knowledge on the topic and you were uh, used to cut meats and- Yeah, I used to cut meat. I was a meat cutter for probably about uh, four or five years. So I know quite a few cuts, what I'm looking for in uh, different cuts of meat the marbling, that he's, kind of thing. He's just the guy because I have zero clue on how to cut this thing. <laughs> so we'll see if he can coach me through it. Let's uh, let's move in and take a look at this brisket. All right, so you guys saw this earlier when I was probing it. I'm just gonna get it out of the paper. I mean, it's, it's pretty uh, gelatin, if you will. So just to give you guys a good look in the sun, pretty decent color on there. I think a lot of my um, bark kind of washed off in, the, in the, the steam and the juice, but I think that's okay, right? I mean, what do you? Yeah, what do you, it looks, uh, color's really good to it. It's got some good buildup of bark uh, up on the point section, this being the flat. Um, you're usually gonna have it more around the edges than you will to try and build bark um, on your main body of it, so to speak. I think you're gonna end up having to uh, cook it longer before a wrap or just not wrap it. Not wrap it at all. That makes sense. So um, it looks like the butcher put a cut here for me. And I think that's against the grain, but I see grain going this way and it might be going this way down here. Any advice on how I should cut? Should I just start from the end and kind of follow that line? Uh, yeah, with a brisket, usually you're gonna have your point and your flat section. So again, your thicker section up here is gonna be your point. Your thinner, flatter section is the flat. Um, you will find that the grain runs in one direction. A really good tip, guys, is look at the look at the actual structure of your graining. So if your structure, structure of graining is, say, running from this back point over to this way, you wanna cut against the grain. So what you're actually gonna do is, uh, there's a couple school of thoughts, I guess. One is you just make a simple slice, just a cut in the, in the end of meat, so that when it does cook, you immediately can see that slice. In so it's it. kind of like a guide. Yeah, it's, from, it's, so yeah, I can't screw up. Yeah, once you're I just see. you're cutting like maybe you know a, a, a quarter or a three eighths kind of slice into the end. You're not really completely slicing all the way through it. Um, the other thing a lot of people will do is they will square off one edge okay. where they're actually taking that piece completely off of it. Gotcha. So um, a lot of people don't want to waste the meat, so they're not going to cut that edge off. Right. So it, it, right. it depends on what you like. A lot of times you can see the grain structure. Or, like you said, your butcher ended up making a, a line up in here to kind of guide you through that section. Thank you, butcher. <laughs> All right, let's cut this up. All right, so I'm gonna follow that cut here, kind of, and we'll just start on this end. Start cutting some slices. It is very soft. Eh, modest, if any, smoke ring so far. How thick do you think I should cut these normally? 
Uh, most guys are run them usually around a pencil width, pencil about width. a quarter inch cut is usually what they like to see. Um, but again, it's preference. If you're looking for a bigger yield, cut them a little bit thinner. Yeah. Uh, you're looking for a nice, you know, thick, uh, meaty, juicy piece. You're gonna cut them a little thicker. Gotcha. Starting to get into some of the, uh, there's that fat layer in between. So I'm interested to see how that one's gonna look. What a lot of people do is they'll kind of even out their cuts a little bit as they go to kind of square it more toward the point too. So you kind of pinch, pinch cut it if you will. Okay, so I should kind of be going yeah, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either see, that or just wedging, wedging the slice as you kind of go to right. kind of square it up more toward the, uh, the, the fat seam between the point and the uh, flat. Gotcha. Almost like a fan cut. Mm, exactly. So what are your pieces looking like now? Yeah, so it definitely looks like you're at that point now between the, the flat and the point itself. You can you can see that that fat line in between. You can see how juicy and tender that looks. I'd say it's a great job, Mike. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, I mean, that is crazy juicy there. Let's see if it pulls apart, which it does effortless. No effort. no yeah, effort. that was effortless. So now that I'm at the point, I've seen guys cut it in half and then uh, usually if you're gonna cut it in half, I think a lot of times it's just more presentation for a camera. So oh, okay. cut it in half, you a lot of guys the traditional pick it up, squeeze it to show you yeah, that juice yeah, yeah. coming out. A lot of that is a lot of that is the, the, the fat rendering right, back yeah. out of it as you're squeezing it. So it depends if you want to go ahead and cut it in half and then cut your slices going completely ninety degrees from your, your flat cut or just start on an end and start cutting that way. The other thing you can do, what a lot of guys like to do, is they will go ahead and cut a nice thick piece, say inch, inch and a quarter. And then they'll come back and they'll cross cut it from there. So they're actually making like square pieces for burnt ends. Okay. So what do you, what should I do for the video? Would you like burnt ends? Cause you're gonna have to do uh, a process with some burnt ends. No, not really. Okay, so just- Just keep cutting it? Yeah, just cut it that way then. This way? Yeah. So make sure this is on camera. So the grain, changes right the grain does change it kind of gets a mixed grain in a way so traditional way to cut the point is the way you're cutting it okay so that's a good point guys you can't keep cutting it that same way all the way across otherwise um you're not going to get as tender of a cut right um they always say to actually put meat in at a colder temperature Yep. The reason behind that is because just about any meat, I don't care if it's beef, chicken, pork, whatever, uh, it's gonna accept smoke up to about 140 degrees. So at that point in time, there's no sense in, in running smoke if you have a pellet smoker or some type of chunk smoker. Right. At that point, no need to anymore. Just, just run your heat and leave it at that. So that's all really good advice. I like that tip about putting it in cold so it's got more opportunity to absorb smoke. Right, so right out of the refrigerator, right? Right so, out of the refrigerator, yeah. A lot of people will say just leave it on the counter, let it warm up the room temperature. Um, you know, I, I personally, uh, I think my process really is whenever I've trimmed that piece, whether it's pork butt, brisket, whatever, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and get my rub put on. Yep. And then I'll let that sweat in for a little bit, which actually what you're doing is you're allowing that salt in the rubs to go down into that meat. Okay. And then what it'll do is it'll actually get like a wet look kind of to it. Yep. And at that point in time, when it gets that wet look, which is, you know, it may, may vary, but you're looking at 15, 20 minutes or so. At that point in time, that's when you go back, maybe touch it up with a little bit more rub. Okay. And go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. Put it back in the refrigerator. So I didn't do that today. I did that when I cooked my, um, my chuck roast, I put it back in the refrigerator for an hour mm -hmm. and that smoke ring was ridiculous. So I think you're right. I should have put this back in the refrigerator this morning after I had the rub on there. Well, hey, let's uh, let's dig in, grab a piece. Sure. Uh, tell me what you think. I used uh, Harry Sue's beef rub. Good stuff. Um, I put some celery seed on there and I used some Worcestershire sauce as a, as a binder. As a binder. Sure. sure. So let's dig in, man. Yeah, I'm Try gonna get a, a little of this point, I think, here. I'm gonna do a little bit of the flat, where the flat meets the point. So yeah. we got that big chunk of fat in the middle. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, my friend. Man. Mm. 
Mm. Very tender, very good. Thank very you. Very good flavor, good beef flavor. Um, and I think the rub, the rub is actually excellent. You can taste a little bit um, <clears throat> of some sugar, like a little yeah, bit, of, a little little bit sugar, of sugar, but some good pepper. Yeah. Good pepper and good seasoning, like salt. Do you think I've seasoned it enough? Should I put more? Next no, time? I think I think, I think the seasoning good. was good. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Was it was it just a single layer then? I did two layers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's really really beefy. I don't know if that's because this is wagyu, or you know, I'm not sure. But this is wagyu. I'm sure your guys' results are going to be similar if you cook it just like I did. We did it um, to we wrapped it to color. And then we stopped cooking it, not to temperature, um, like Ted said, but instead probe tender. And then we let it rest. But that that flavor is really, really good. Yeah, I think that's that's a really good point, Mike. Too um, bringing up that probe tender again. Um, I think if if I'm really worried about uh, temperature, it, it's it's in that initial stage, you know, where where I'm trying to see. Um, at that 140 degree point where like i say it's not going to really accept a whole lot more smoke that it just doesn't doesn't prove a point to keep on adding smoke um but then after that point if it doesn't have the bark doesn't have the color i'm looking for i'm going to continue to let it go and then uh once i actually see that bark that i like set yeah. where the rub is not you know you can kind of take your finger and kind of rub it a little bit see if that rub actually is still rubbing off if it is let it stay on there some more because yeah. you run the risk of once you wrap, pulling that rub off of there, sweating that right. rub off of there. So you really got to let it <clears throat> set, really. Yeah. And then once you wrap it, at that point, like uh, like Mike did today with the peach paper, um, I don't want to say it's a new school way of doing it, because <laughs> yeah. it's kind of a proven technique. But uh, I think I think peach peach paper, the butcher paper, is your best bet, really, because. As you can see, it, it definitely absorbs the grease. It doesn't hold the grease. It's not going to allow it to like baste and, cool and, and yeah, steam, simmer and right? steam and everything else in, the, in that. So yeah, that was nice to have all the juice kind of uh, leak slowly out of there. You still wrapped it and kept it nice and tender. Um, but man, is that good? I mean, for my first brisket ever, I, I would say you know that pit boss did a fantastic job. So excellent. Yeah, it was good work on that. I'd, I'd definitely give it an A plus, man. Great oh, job, cool. dude. Great Thank job. you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, you gave me a lot of great pointers. Uh, we talked on the phone yesterday for about an hour about it, and I'm really happy to have you on the channel and introduce you to these folks. Guys, go check out Ted. I'm going to put a link to his channel right here. Um, he just did, what was your last video? A smoked meatloaf? Smoked meatloaf, yeah. Stuffed yeah. smoked meatloaf. It was off the hook crazy. I'll put a video card up for that as well. Go check out Ted and give him a warm welcome to YouTube. Thanks guys, appreciate it. See you next time.